In October 2025, Tropical Storm Ramil brought devastating floods to Capiz province in western Visayas. Over 102,000 people were affected, seven died, and entire communities were submerged under meters of water. But this wasn't the first time western Visayas has flooded. In fact, this region of the Philippines floods almost every typhoon season, sometimes multiple times in a single year. And while storms like Ramil trigger the flooding, the real reason western Visayas is so vulnerable lies in its geography. Today, we're going to explain the geographic factors that make Western Visayas one of the most flood-prone regions in the Philippines. From its flat coastal plains to its mountain drainage systems, from its position in the typhoon belt to its river networks, we'll break down why this beautiful region faces disaster year after year. Western Visayas is one of the 17 regions of the Philippines. It consists of six provinces, Aklan, Antique, Capiz, Guimaras, Iloilo, and Negros Occidental. The region is located in the central Philippines, occupying the western portion of the Visayas Island Group. The largest island in western Visayas is Panay, which contains four of the six provinces, Aklan, Antique, Capiz, and Iloilo. Negros Occidental occupies the northwestern portion of Negros Island, and Guimaras is a small island province between Panay and Negros. The region has a population of approximately 7.5 million people. Major cities include Iloilo City, the regional center and largest urban area, and Bacolod City in Negros Occidental. The economy is based on agriculture, fishing, tourism, and increasingly business process outsourcing. But while Western Visayas is economically important and densely populated, it is also one of the most disaster-prone regions in the Philippines and geography is the primary reason why. One of the most significant geographic factors that makes Western Visayas vulnerable to flooding is elevation, or rather, the lack of it. Much of Western Visayas, particularly the provinces of Capiz, Iloilo, and parts of Negros Occidental, consists of low-lying coastal plains. These are flat areas with elevations barely above sea level. In some locations, the land sits just two to five meters above sea level. And in a few areas, particularly those affected by land subsidence, elevations are even lower. When a tropical storm or typhoon brings heavy rainfall, water has nowhere to go. It can't drain quickly into the ocean because the land is nearly level with the sea. Instead, it pools, spreads, and accumulates across these flat plains, submerging towns, farmland, and infrastructure. Capiz province, which bore the brunt of tropical storm Ramil's flooding, is a prime example. Much of Capiz consists of coastal lowlands and river valleys with minimal elevation. When the Panay River and its tributaries overflow, the water spreads across these flat areas with devastating effect. The topography of Panay Island creates a geographic trap for floodwaters. The island has a central mountain range running through its spine. These mountains, while not extremely high by global standards, are tall enough to capture rainfall from passing storms. When a tropical cyclone moves over or near Panay, the mountains force the moist air upward. This orographic lifting causes heavy rainfall on the mountain slopes. That rainfall then flows downhill through river systems, converging in the lowland areas along the coast. The result? Upstream rainfall in the mountains, translates to downstream flooding in the lowlands. And because the lowlands are flat and close to sea level, the water has difficulty draining away quickly. This topographic setup means that provinces like Capiz, Iloilo, and Aklan are particularly vulnerable. They sit at the bottom of the watershed, receiving not just local rainfall, but also all the runoff from the mountains inland. Western Visayas, is positioned directly in one of the most active typhoon paths in the Western Pacific. Tropical cyclones that form east of the Philippines often track westward across the Visayas before making landfall in central or northern Luzon, or continuing west toward Vietnam and southern China. The Western Visayas region sits in this direct path. On average, the Philippines is affected by 20 tropical cyclones per year and Western Visayas experiences impacts from a significant number of these storms. Some storms make direct landfall in the region. Others pass nearby, bringing heavy rain and wind even without a direct strike. October and November 
are peak months for typhoons affecting western Visayas. This is when the monsoon transitions and tropical cyclone activity is at its highest in the western Pacific. And this is when flooding is most common. The geographic positioning of western Visayas means it cannot avoid the storms. It sits in a meteorologically active zone and there is no high ground or natural barrier to protect it. Western Visayas is crisscrossed by river systems that drain the interior mountains and carry water to the coast. On Panay Island, the major rivers include the Panay River, Jalor River, Sibalom River, and Aklan River. On Negros, rivers drain from the central mountain range westward to the coast. Under normal conditions, these rivers are essential for agriculture, providing irrigation and fresh water. But during heavy rainfall from typhoons and tropical storms, these rivers quickly exceed their capacity. The Panay River, which flows through Capiz province, is particularly prone to flooding. When upstream areas receive heavy rain, the river swells rapidly. And because the river flows through low-lying plains before reaching the sea, it overflows its banks easily, inundating surrounding communities. The problem is made worse by poor river management. Sedimentation has reduced the capacity of some rivers, Illegal construction along riverbanks has narrowed channels, and deforestation in upstream watersheds has increased the speed and volume of runoff, meaning rivers rise faster and higher than they did decades ago. Deforestation is a critical but often overlooked factor in western Visayas flooding. Over the past several decades, large areas of forest in the upland and mountain regions of Panay and Negros have been cleared for agriculture, logging, and development. Forests act as natural sponges, they absorb rainfall, slow runoff, and release water gradually into river systems. When forests are removed, rainfall runs off the land much more quickly. This increases the speed and volume of water flowing into rivers, which in turn increases the likelihood and severity of flooding downstream. In western Visayas, deforestation has been extensive, particularly in mountain watersheds. This has contributed to more frequent and severe flooding in lowland provinces like Capiz, Iloilo, and Aklan. And because reforestation efforts have been slow and inconsistent, the problem persists. Coastal areas of western Visayas face an additional threat, storm surge. Storm surge is the abnormal rise in sea level caused by a storm's winds pushing water toward the coast. When a typhoon or tropical storm approaches, storm surge can raise sea levels by several meters, flooding coastal communities. Western Visayas, with its long coastline and low-lying coastal plains, is highly vulnerable to storm surge. In provinces like Capiz and Iloilo, where towns and cities are built close to the coast, storm surge can inundate large areas, compounding the inland flooding caused by heavy rainfall. The combination of heavy rainfall flooding from inland and storm surge flooding from the coast creates a pincer effect. Communities are flooded from multiple directions, with nowhere to escape. Another geographic factor is the drainage infrastructure, or rather, the lack of adequate drainage infrastructure. Many towns and cities in western Visayas were built decades or even centuries ago, long before modern urban planning and flood control engineering became standard. Drainage systems in older towns are often inadequate for the volume of water produced by modern tropical storms. Canals are too narrow, pumping stations are underpowered or poorly maintained, and in many rural areas, there is no formal drainage infrastructure at all. When a storm like Ramil drops hundreds of millimeters of rain in 24 hours, these drainage systems are quickly overwhelmed. Water backs up, floods streets, and enters homes and businesses. And because much of the land is flat and low-lying, there is no natural gradient to help water drain away. Climate change is making the geographic vulnerabilities of western Visayas even worse. Global warming is increasing sea surface temperatures in the western Pacific, which provides more energy for tropical cyclone formation and intensification. This means stronger storms and heavier rainfall. Studies have shown that while the total number of tropical cyclones may not be increasing, the intensity of the strongest storms is increasing, and the amount of rainfall these storms produce is also increasing. For western Visayas, this means more frequent and severe flooding events. Sea level rise, another consequence of climate change, is also affecting western Visayas. As sea levels rise, low-lying coastal areas become more vulnerable to both regular tidal flooding and storm surge. 
Areas that were once safe are now at risk. And areas that were already at risk are now even more vulnerable. So the geographic factors that make Western Visayas vulnerable to storms are numerous and interconnected. Low-lying coastal plains, flat topography with poor natural drainage, mountains that channel rainfall into lowland river systems, a position directly in the path of tropical cyclones, river systems prone to overflow, deforested watersheds that accelerate runoff, vulnerable coastlines exposed to storm surge, inadequate drainage infrastructure, and climate change making all of these factors worse. This is not a problem that can be solved by avoiding storms. Storms will continue to come. The geography cannot be changed, but the vulnerability can be reduced. Reducing Western Visayas' vulnerability to flooding requires a combination of infrastructure investment, land use planning, environmental restoration, and community preparedness. Infrastructure improvements are essential. This includes upgrading drainage systems, building flood control structures, dredging rivers to increase capacity, and constructing pumping stations to remove water from low-lying areas. These are expensive and long-term projects, but they are necessary. Land use planning is also critical. Building homes and businesses in flood-prone areas should be restricted. Zoning laws should prohibit development in river floodplains and low-lying coastal zones and existing communities in high-risk areas may need to be relocated over time. Reforestation of upland watersheds is another important step. Restoring forest cover in the mountains of Panay and Negros would slow runoff, reduce peak river flows, and decrease the severity of downstream flooding. This requires government support, community involvement, and long-term commitment. Early warning systems and community preparedness are also vital. Pagasa, the Philippine Weather Agency, provides forecasts and warnings, but these need to reach all communities quickly and effectively. Local governments must have evacuation plans, and residents must know where to go and what to do when a storm approaches. Finally, climate adaptation strategies are necessary. As climate change continues to intensify storms and raise sea levels, Western Visayas must plan for a future where flooding is more frequent and severe. This includes building resilient infrastructure, protecting natural buffers like mangroves and wetlands, and preparing communities for long-term changes. The geography that makes Western Visayas vulnerable to storms is fixed. The flat plains, the mountain drainage, the position in the typhoon belt, these cannot be changed, but the outcome does not have to be repeated disaster. With investment, planning, and commitment, Western Visayas can reduce its vulnerability. Communities can be made safer. Infrastructure can be improved. And when the next storm comes, fewer people will lose their homes, their livelihoods, or their lives. Tropical Storm Ramil was a reminder of this vulnerability. But it doesn't have to be a preview of the future. Geography is destiny only if we accept it as inevitable. And in the Philippines, the people have proven time and again that resilience, ingenuity, and determination can overcome even the most difficult geographic challenges. If you want to learn more about the geography, geology, and disaster risks facing the Philippines, subscribe to this channel. We break down the forces, natural and human, that shape this nation and what can be done to build a safer future. Stay safe, stay informed, and understand the geography that shapes your world.